now we take off in VR and for real. My name is Roger via Flight Tech Educator. Today we bring in the classroom into the simulator and back again. Hello everyone. Welcome everyone and a special shout out to all my new followers. Great to have you here. This is video number two and this is where the real substance begins. In my first video I showed you something that many consider impossible. Landing the Viggen on an aircraft carrier. Now in this video we're going even deeper. I'll be showing you the Viggen Tartarier hatch. Testing whether it's possible to perform a Cobra maneuver with the Viggen. And pushing the aircraft to its limit with engine surging and compressor stops. Right to the point where the engine flames out. So buckle up because things are about to get intense. During a lesson in M11 structures, I was asked what is a Tetario structure? On the Viggen, there's a Tetario hatch on the rear fuselage. When does it open? It turned out that it's linked to the different stages of the afterburner. I tested it in the simulator, compared it with the manual, and it matched perfectly. Perfectly. So, next one. One student asked. Is it possible to perform a Cobra maneuver in the Viggen? I tested it. The answer is no. Not a pure Cobra. And there's a clear reason. The Viggen was built as a stable aircraft. To perform a true Cobra maneuver, you need an unstable aircraft, like the SU-27, where the pilot can disable safety systems and push the aircraft to extreme angle of attack. When I tried it in, in the Viggen, surging occurs and the engines shut down. This is due to turbulent airflow and restricted intake at high alpha angles. The result is that the engine simply chokes. I'm gaining height, but I'm losing speed. And I'm getting into a situation that is called stall. Here's something every pilot must understand. It's stall. When the wing loses li lift, the aircraft drops. But with the right technique, recovery is possible. Here you can see me recovering from stall several times during the flight. Low speed, but I ignite the engine again and again stable. In M8 aerodynamics, we talk about subsonic, transonic, and supersonic flight. Here you can see me when the transonic warning lights come on. A clear example of the transition towards the sound barrier. Now we're gaining height. I'm going up to about 30,000 feet. Um, that's where I can get the much punch for the speed of the aircraft. Well, you hear that? The sound went silent. And uh, that's because I'm faster than sound with the airplane. You can hear the sound behind the aircraft, but not uh, in the nose. I'm trying to gain up speed here um, to about uh, Mach 1.4. I'm trying to do a Cobra maneuver at the speed of sound. Let's see what happens. some uh, amazing images we get to see here uh, above the clouds and at uh, those uh, speed we're having now 
uh, just a little bit by the control stick uh, makes the airplane uh, react very like uh, it's sensitive so you have to be uh, very careful I'm looking at the speed instrument, waiting to Mach 1.4. Soon, soon. And there we have it, at Mach 1.4 with aggressive maneuvers, the aircraft begins to tear apart. The Vigan simply wasn't built for this kind of extreme moment. I also tested a short field takeoff on a highway. When the landing gear is lowered, the flaps are automatically deployed, giving extra lift. On the real aircraft, there was also a manual flap lever the pilot could use, something I haven't tested in the simulator yet. But it might come, become its own clip later. Well, uh, the reason why I tried this uh, with the landing gear down is because I'm getting a much higher um, alpha but it has its consequences here's the consequence the engine flames out I tried to restart but at too low at altitude it's already too late in reality I would have ejected with the rocket seat long before but in VR I push on into the very end I'm trying to ignite the engine again But it fails. This sh shows how we can take questions from the classroom, test them in the simulator, and then return with answers. We looked at structures, stalls, aerodynamics, and why certain maneuvers simply don't work in the Viking. Want to see more experiments and explanations? Subscribe, like and write in the comments. Which maneuver or system you'd like me to test the next time? And remember, behind every flight there is technology. Thank you for watching.